The day we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Sunday, May 29, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 500 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Colorado Rockies at Washington Nationals. Our team pick is. Colorado Rockies plus 1.5 runs. And here is why. The Colorado Rockies have not started the 2022 regular season how they would have liked, but they still have plenty of time to turn this season around. They are currently in last place in the NL West. On the offensive side of the field, they have been performing at a high level. They are currently scoring 4.57 runs per game and hitting .261 as a team. This is the 8th most runs scored per game and the highest team batting average in the league. Nobody is making more contact with the ball than the Rockies, and they are showing that their batting order is deep enough to consistently drive in runs. They can also score in multiple different ways, as they have been stringing together hits to score and also hitting multiple home runs. They are averaging .96 home runs per game, which is the 19th lowest average in the league. They have multiple men that can change the game with one swing of the bat. They have also been extremely unaggressive once they have reached base safely, as they have only stolen 9 bases this season. They don't try to push their runners into scoring position as quickly as they can, as their bats have been solid enough to bring men around to score. Watch for CJ Cron at the plate in this one. He is currently hitting .308, and he's already poked out 12 home runs. Both of these statistics lead his team, as he has been providing offense since the first game of the season. The Washington Nationals have also had a slow start to this season, but they still have plenty of time to turn it around. They are currently in last place in the NL East. On the offensive side of the field, they are currently scoring 3.91 runs per game and hitting .252 as a team. This is the sixth highest overall team batting average, but the 23rd least amount of runs scored per game. The Nationals have shown that they have what it takes to reach base safely, but they have struggled to drive in these runs once they are in scoring position. Washington has also shown that they lack some serious home run power. They are only averaging .63 per game, which is the 27th lowest average in the league. They are also extremely unaggressive once they have reached base safely. They have only stolen 19 bases this season, which is the 22nd most in the MLB. They have been able to move their runners into scoring position with their bats, they just have to become more clutch when they have men in scoring position. Watch for Josh Bell at the plate in this one. He is currently hitting .296 and has already driven in 25 runs, which leads his team. I will be riding with the away team in this matchup. Both of these teams struggle on the defensive side of the field, but the Rockies have the edge when they are at the plate. Colorado is currently scoring the 8th most runs per game, and they have the highest overall team batting average. They will consistently reach base against Josiah Gray, and the Nationals will be forced to turn to their bullpen early in this game. Gray has started this season, 4-4, with a 5.44 ERA, and I just don't believe he has what it takes to take down this high-power defense. He was shelled in his last start against the Dodgers, and I don't see him going deep into this one. The Nationals will also struggle when they are on the offensive side of the field. They are only scoring 3.91 runs per game and hitting .252 as a team. They haven't been able to drive in runs when they have men in scoring position, and this trend will continue in this one. Kyle Freeland is the Rockies' ace, and he will be doing everything he can to turn his season around. He has struggled in his first few starts, but he has what it takes to attack this weak Nationals offense. Our total pick is over. Detroit Tigers vs Cleveland Guardians. Our team pick is Cleveland Guardians. And here is why. Cleveland dropped their third straight game and their fourth in the last five, as they were beaten in walk-off fashion by the Tigers Thursday night in the opener. The Guardians entered Saturday third in the Isle Central, 7.5 games behind the Twins for the division lead. On Thursday, Cleveland got two hits from Oscar Gonzalez, Willow and Miller, two RBI, along with Luke Mayo, RBI, knocked in runs. Connor Pilkington didn't factor in the decision as he threw 3.1 innings, allowing three runs on seven hits with four walks and four strikeouts before departing. Trevor Steffen, 2-2, took the loss as he allowed one run on two hits with no walks and one strikeout in one-third of an inning of relief. 
Detroit took the opening game of the set by winning in walk-off fashion, avoiding wasting a stellar start on the mound. The Tigers entered Saturday 4th in the Isle Central race, 11 games behind the Twins for the top spot in the division standings. In Thursday's game, Miguel Cabrera, 2 RBI, had 3 hits, while Robbie Grossman, 2 runs, had a pair. Cabrera knocked in the winning run with an RBI single in the bottom of the ninth, plating Jonathan Shoup. Tarek Skubal threw 7 innings, allowing 3 runs on 5 hits with 1 walk and 5 strikeouts, yet ended up with a no decision. Gregory Soto, 2-2, earned the win in relief as he threw a scoreless ninth, allowing one hit with no walks and one strikeout. While the Tigers won the opening game of this series Thursday night, things aren't looking as rosy on the weekend. The pitching matchups favor the Guardians on both Saturday, Shane Bieber vs Alex Fido, and in this one. Rodriguez is up mainly because Matt Manning is still on the Illinois with biceps tendonitis, while Eduardo Rodriguez is on the shelf as well. The Guardians are not a powerhouse team by any stretch of the imagination, but McKenzie has owned the Tigers in his career. He's also been on a roll of late with four straight quality starts on the books. His three wins have come during that stretch as well. Cleveland has the edge on the mound, and McKenzie handcuffs the Tigers again to deliver a victory on getaway day for the visitors. Our total pick is over 7.5 runs. And here is why the Tigers have lost five of their last eight games, and they've struggled offensively, scoring eight runs in their last three games. Things won't get easier for them in this game because they don't hit the ball well against right-handers, and they're facing a starter that has done a great job on the road, giving up 10 runs in five road starts. He gave up two runs in four starts against the Tigers and will keep their offense in check once again. The Guardians have also struggled in recent games, but they continue to play well offensively. They've hit the ball well against right-handers, and they're facing a starter that has struggled on the mound, giving up seven runs in 7.2 innings pitched this season, so expect him to have a hard time slowing down Cleveland's offense. Tampa Bay Rays vs New York Yankees. Our team pick is New York Yankees for the win. Luis Severino is on the mound as he makes his ninth start of the season for the Yankees in this contest. He is 3-0 with a 3.02 ERA, a 1.176 whip, 11 walks and 43 strikeouts over 41.2 innings of work on the season. Severino didn't factor in the decision in his last start, which came against the White Sox last Sunday night at home. He threw seven innings, allowing no runs on eight hits with no walks and five strikeouts in a game the Yankees lost 5-0. In his last three starts, Severino is 1-0 with a 2.04 ERA, a 1.02 whip, 4 walks and 20 strikeouts over 17.2 innings of work this season. Severino makes his 15th career appearance and 10th start against the Rays in this contest. He comes in 8-2 with a 3.11 ERA, a 1.185 whip, 18 walks and 86 strikeouts over 66.2 innings of work against them. Severino is 3-1 with a 3.46 ERA, a 1.346 whip, 8 walks and 35 strikeouts over 26 innings in 7 career appearances, 4 starts, at Tropicana Field. Shane McClanahan is on the mound for the 10th time this season for Tampa Bay, looking to continue his strong start to the year. He is 4-2 with a 2.06 ERA, a 0.879 whip, 12 walks and 74 strikeouts over 52.1 innings of action on the year. McClanahan earned the win in his last start, which came Tuesday at home against the Marlins. He threw six scoreless frames, allowing four hits with two walks and nine strikeouts in a game the Rays went on to win by a 4-0 count. In his last three starts, McClanahan is 2-0 with a 0.45 ERA, a 0.70 whip, three walks and 27 strikeouts over 20 innings of action. McClanahan makes his fourth career start against the Yankees in this contest. He comes in 0-2 with a 5.84 ERA, a 1.784 whip, 5 walks and 15 strikeouts over 12.1 innings of work. McClanahan is 10-5 with a 3.11 ERA, a 1.21 whip, 30 walks, and 129 strikeouts, over 98.1 innings over 19 starts in his career at Tropicana Field. Tampa Bay has been good this season, but they have struggled at the plate in this series against the Yankees. Their only two runs in the first two games of the series came in the ninth inning of the opener, when the game was already decided. McClanahan has been terrific and leads the league in strikeouts on the season going into this contest. He'll need to be sharp to keep a sputtering Rays lineup and striking distance here. New York has been clicking again with four straight wins entering Saturday. Severino has been sharp in his last three outings, making this one a tough pitching matchup. With that said, you have to lean toward the team with the better offensive output, and that leans toward the Yankees or total pick is. Under 6.5 runs. The Yankees have won four straight games and four of their last five road games. They are playing well offensively, scoring 18 runs in their last four games. 
even though McClanahan has been great on the mound for the Rays this season, he hasn't had a lot of success against New York, going 0-2 in three starts against them, giving up eight runs, so expect him to have a hard time slowing their offense down. The Rays have lost three of their last five games, and they've struggled offensively, scoring only seven runs in their last three games. Things won't get easier for them in this game because Severino has been great on the mound for the Yankees, giving up eight runs in his last four starts. He has had a lot of success against the Rays, going 8-2 in 10 starts against them. He gave up 12 runs in his last five starts against the Rays and will keep their offense in check once again, so go with New York to get the win. Disclaimer, no financial advice, the information on this channel is provided for education and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information contained in or provided from or through this channel is not intended to be and does not constitute financial advice, investment advice, trading advice or any other advice. The information on this channel and provided from or through this channel is general in nature and is not specific to you the user or anyone else. You should not make any decision, financial, investment, trading or otherwise, based on any of the information presented on this channel without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or financial advisory.